Hello and welcome to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing Football Manager 2022 and taking a look at the Gegenfress system and the sort of players that would work well within it. Uh, now the first three er uh, episodes have concentrated on the attacking players and today we're going to have a look at the first role in the central midfield that we're going to look at, which is the advanced playmaker role with an attacking uh, mindset. So we're going to quickly remind ourselves what that does. He aims to drop into the holes between the opposition's midfield and defence, making himself available for his teammates' passes and aiming to turn defence into attack in an instant. Uh, with an attack duty, he's going to look at to run at the defensive line from deep positions, aiming to craft out crossing or through ball opportunities as he moves into the final third. So, in a nutshell, this is your... If the box-to-box -box midfielder is the engine room, then the... Um, the advanced playmaker is probably the throttle. He's someone who's going to be running into this kind of number 10 space, this attacking midfield space here. He's going to sort of receive the ball in midfield and run forward, looking for passes and cross opportunities out to the attackers. And someone who's probably going to be taking his fair share of uh, long shots as well, and even getting into the area and having, you know, sort of closer finishes. So a very attacking player, but someone who has a good amount of creativity as well. And we're going to start off by looking at someone who's probably uh, the best in the game, the best in the world at this kind of, of role. And that player is Kevin De Bruyne at Manchester City. Uh, he's been at Man City for you know a good number of years. He's uh, just, I mean, for all the, all the money they've spent and all the uh, good players that they have, he's, he's arguably their most important player and has been for, for quite some time. Now, if we uh, if we look at uh, Kevin De Bruyne here, we can see that he's uh, he's he's got a, high stats almost everywhere. But there's a few that we're going to look at in particular for this role. Uh, the main ones for me, anyway, being passing and vision. So someone who is going to spot those passes, uh, those the passing opportunities, and he's going to be able to pick out those passes on a regular, reliable basis. Uh, sort of allied to that, we're going to have a look at uh, players with good first touch and techniques. So players who can, uh, as he's moving forward, receive the ball, control it very quickly, and he's going to pick out his pass very well with his vision and passing, and the technique means he's going to strike the ball very sweetly and, you know, make it go where he wants it to go, basically. Something else that's fairly important for this role um, is acceleration. Pace tends to be less important, like the sort of flat-out pace, but acceleration, he's going to be, you know, making those short sprints and, and getting away from, from defenders that way. So De Bruyne is, is pretty good in, in that. They don't need to be lightning quick, but, you know, a bit of acceleration is, is very good. Uh, agility as well. They're going to be someone who's kind of riding challenges, uh, getting around defenders, uh, defensive midfielders are going to be putting in tackles. Um, so a decent determination as well, to be honest. Agility and determination, quite good. Um, dribbling, fairly important. As we said, they're going to be running with the ball quite often as they're looking for the passing opportunities. And flair as well, because they're a very creative player, someone who can do the unexpected on a, rely on a regular basis is uh, quite valuable. Also very important for this role is decisions. So as well as vision, which is you know spotting those passing opportunities, Decisions just means that this player is going to be doing the right thing at the right time most often, more often than not, and uh, that, that is quite important. And lastly, movement is also quite important for this role, so something like anticipation and off the ball, because they are going to be making runs uh, sort of into the final third on a very regular basis. So moving to places where their teammates c can reach them and also having the anticipation to know when the ball is coming to them. Uh, now De Bruyne... It's probably not someone, unless you're actually playing as Manchester City, probably not someone you're going to be able to get on your team. He's got a, a long-term contract for another four years. He, uh, his value is above £200 million. And in fact, I've, you know, a couple of months into the campaign, I've actually looked at him and seen he's just simply not for sale. <laughs> he's not someone that Manchester City want to sell at all, and with good cause. But we have quite a few players who uh, can do a good job as well. Uh, but there are quite a few de development opportunities, and we're going to look at one of those first. Uh, probably one of my favourite players in the game, actually, for this position is Ilyich Moriba. Uh, I think that's how you say his name. And at the start of the game, he's 18 years old. He's actually on loan from uh, Leipzig. He's on loan at Valencia. And he can play in any of the central midfield roles, really, but he's, he's most natural right in the centre here, and it's the uh, advanced playmaker role where he's most comfortable. Uh, now, in aged 18, he already has very good stats very very good stats um, he's got good passing and vision he's uh, pretty quick he's got good agility very determined good flair uh, he can dribble he can finish he's got a great first touch 
um, very good technique uh, and uh, and decisions very good as well um, but I'm going to load up a, a slide now which uh, shows how he's going to look in a few years time and you can see that he just he just develops immensely and you know by the age of 21 22 he's he's easily going to be you know a linchpin in midfield for a title chasing team champions league chasing team even so in terms of his player traits he's got shoots from distance shoots with power arrives late in the opponent's area is quite a nice one for this role tries tricks works well with the flair runs with the ball often works well with the dribbling um so yeah in terms of cost i mean at, he's obviously on loan at Valencia, so you're not going to be able to get him at, until summer 2022 at the earliest. And I've I've bought him for somewhere between 75 to 85 million pounds. Usually, he's he's got a more expensive price tag here, um, so it's possible that you may have to put some add-ons on top of something like that. But there's a good chance you you can get him. And also, he doesn't require silly wages either. So um, yeah, very good signing for me. And from Moriba, we're going to actually move to one of his uh, teammates in Germany, who is uh, Dominic Zobosle, I think is how you pronounce that. Um, he's 20, so he's a little bit older. He's also a wonder kid. Um, and again, he's probably one of my favourites for this role. If I can't get uh, Moriba, I, I tend to try and get Zobosle. Um So very good pace, very quite agile, uh, very good flair, determination. Anticipation off the ball, very good. Passing and vision, very good. He's actually a very good penalty taker as well, and free kick taker, and corners. So not only is he very good in his uh, advanced playmaker role, he's actually going to be a very good set-piece taker for all your set-pieces on your team, <laughs> which is invaluable, really. So very good technique, very good first touch. Uh, dribbling and finishing, pretty good. And if we look at here how he's going to look in a few years' time, uh, you can see that he just continues to develop and... For, for me, becomes you know one of the best at this role in the game. Now, in terms of value, he's he's fairly similar to Moriba actually, and um, actually has a very similar price tag here. And again, anywhere between sort of seventy-five to eighty-five million pounds, hopefully. Um, he's been at uh, Leipzig for a little while, I think. Well, this is his second season, so he should be. Um, they should be open to selling him, and he should be open to a move away. So yeah, very good choice. Uh, and from Zabozli, we're going to look at another development option, uh, a bit close to home this time. And the player is Harvey Elliott. Now, this is someone who, when Liverpool purchased him from Fulham, he, he was seen as more of a, a right winger. But uh, last season, at the beginning of the season, Jurgen Klopp started playing him in this uh, this central midfield role. And for me, he's very suitable to the advanced playmaker role that we're looking at. He's actually... Not a natural there, his class is accomplished at the start of the season, but if you start training him in that position and playing him there, uh, he'll, he'll adapt to it and become a natural there very, very quickly. Uh, he's already very good, he's quite pacey, got good agility and balance, he's, uh, you know, he's determined, got, makes fairly good decisions, anticipation and off the ball are good, good passing and vision, very good technique and first touch, in fact they're excellent. Uh, dribbling very good, finishing a, a bit lower, but he will come along in that. And if we look at how he's going to look in a few years' time, uh, we can see that, yeah, he continues to develop very, very well. Uh, tries killer balls often. This is a very nice trait for these advanced playmakers to have. You know, he's going to be trying to pick out through balls and, you know, get his strikers and his forwards through on goal as, as often as possible. Comes deep to get balls, to get the ball. So he's, uh, you know, he's going to be mixing it in midfield as well. He's not just going to be sitting in a high up position and not getting involved in the press. Tries tricks and likes balls played into feet. That, that works well. And cuts inside for the right wing is, is all right, but, you know, he's, no, he's not going to be playing there for us. Uh, interestingly, he is left-footed as well. So on our um, Geek and Press screen, you probably noticed our advanced playmaker was on the left side of the, the two in midfield. Um, so that would work well there for Elliot as well. And in terms of value, uh, I think Liverpool really want to keep hold of him, but they are also open to selling him because he, he starts off in the youth team, uh, perhaps a bit undervalued at the start of the game, considering where he's gonna go uh, so something like a 50 million to 60 million pound mark you'd probably be able to get him for uh, which I think is worth it and if we look to another youngster currently playing in England we go to Hannibal Mabry who is currently playing at Manchester United now often he seems to always go to this most natural role being in this attacking left position where in fact he's actually more 
natural playing in central midfield here and as an attacking playmaker or advanced playmaker sorry he is uh, yeah very good I think very pacey good agility and balance he's determined um, fairly good passing and vision but he will increase those good flair dribbling and finishing not bad technique and first touch pretty good and we're going to again have a look at how he's going to be playing in a few years time and someone who, who does push on pretty well he's perhaps not going to be elite world class uh, eventually but he's someone who um, for any sort of upper table Premier League team w would be a good choice certainly for a rotation option with someone like an Elliot for instance in terms of the price he's uh, available for a bit less you could probably pick him up for around about the 25 to 30 million pound mark uh, he's been I think he's been at United for a little while yeah so three seasons so he's someone who they should be open to selling and who should be open to a move that he's, he's wanted by Arsenal here it gives you an idea of the sort of teams who are looking at him and he is, he is versatile as well, so you can also use him in this, in this wide left position because he does have a bit of pace. Um, but as I said, we're, today we're looking at the advanced playmaker. Now to, from Maybury to someone, from, from a, a fairly talented youngster um, to someone who is probably one of the most talented youngsters in the game. And this is Garvey, someone who in real life is having um, some contract stuff going on with Barcelona at the moment. They want to keep him, he's keeping his options fairly open at the moment I think. Um, but certainly in the game, he's under contract till 2024. Um, you know, you can, he's someone who you can sign for probably around the £50 million pound mark. Um, again, a wonder kid, trying killer balls often, playing one twos and trying tricks. He's decently quick. He's not the strongest, he's not the biggest. He's 5'8", but with very low jumping, but that's fine. Uh, good determination and flair, good technique and first touch and passing and vision, very good dribbling anticipation and off the ball again all very good and if we see he's bear in mind he's only 17 here and he's in fact he's only just 17 so still a very young player in the game and that means um, you're not going to be able to sign him uh, in the first transfer window you'll have to wait until the, the second summer transfer window in 2022 I think to, to lure him away from Spain um, but yeah around around the sort of 50 million pound mark should be okay and uh, yeah, so now we're going to look at the last player I've identified, who again is is one of the best I think in the position. He's Danny Olmo, also at uh, at Leipzig. They've actually got some really good players in this central midfield, haven't they? Uh, so he could play at, in the central midfield or as a ten. So quite versatile. We're going to think about him in the advanced playmaker role, though. So you know, reasonably quick, good agility and balance. His passing and vision are very good. His, uh, he's a good team worker as well, but his off the ball and anticipation very high, very high flair, good determination, very good dribbling, decent finishing, very good first touch and technique. So already he's someone who would be, you know, first choice for, for a title chasing Premier League team, I would say. And if we look at him in a few years time, we can see that he uh, becomes, you know, among, among the best players in the game in this role. Uh, now, in terms of when he moved to Leipzig, it was, it was a few seasons ago. So again, he's someone who should be open to, to being sold and uh, the club should be open to selling him. And it, it depends. I generally have paid around the 35 to 40 million pound mark for Olmo. Um, maybe with some add-ons on top of that just to try and make it more attractive to Leipzig. Um, but yeah, good choice. And there we go. Those are some of my favourite players in the game for the advanced playmaker role. I, players who at different times and in different campaigns I, I've used them all in my different teams and had very good success with so you know highly recommended any of those so thanks very much for watching I hope that was useful uh, if, it, if you enjoyed it then please do hit the like button on the video and consider subscribing to the channel as well and I'll see you next time where we're going to take a look at the box-to-box -box role in central midfield and uh, yeah see you next time